In 1949, a Danish woodworker sat in his studio, and he was up to something new. His name was Ole Krik Christiansen, and he was up to making a new toy. Until then, children had only been offered ready-made solutions, and Ole thought they needed something different. Ole thought they needed something that would strengthen their imagination and creativity. And Ola came up with a toy system. And it was this system that inspired me, 60 years later, to become an architect. So I got my first box of Lego when I was three years old. And I loved it so much that sometimes I just faked to be ill. And so I didn't have to go to school, and I could finish my latest creation. Um, and my uncle started to tell me that I should become an architect. Um, and, and when you're a child that age, um, your grandparents and your aunts, they ask one important big people question. You know what it is? <laughs> what do you want to go, what do you want to become when you grow up? So I started telling them, I wanted to become an architect. And I didn't have any clue what that was, but at least they shut up. <laughs> but then, in fact, 10 years later, I found myself in architecture school. And over there, I learned a lot about uh, the world's problems. Architects think to, used to think very broadly. Um, and I learned how complex and um, difficult the world's problems are in sense of environment and uh, social problems. And I decided that I want to do something about that as an architect. But what do you do when you're a, a student, 19 years old? And I was inspired when I met an Australian guy called Bill Mollison. And he has a special view. He believes that we should tackle these problems with small local solutions. And he always says that although the problems of the world are increasingly complex, the solutions remain embarrassingly simple. Inspired by that, I got to Australia after my study to live with Bill and see how he did that. And I lived in Australia for half a year, and we grew our own vegetables, we purified our own water, um, we generated our own electricity, and we recycled our own waste. And for me, that was a very special message, because I thought it was very powerful to see the direct consequences of your actions. And I think that that was what I brought back with me to the Netherlands. It showed me how I could do something to improve the world. And when I got back to the Netherlands, I got a very special opportunity. I got the opportunity to put my uh, experience from what I learned in the university and in Australia, I combined them in a building, a building that was flexible, built from locally sourced bio-based building materials, that was fully self-sufficient, and that I could easily assemble with a small team. And this building is called the Drijfveer. And the Drijfveer is a floating visitor center made from local materials. And we started the design process not by uh, a form, but looking for materials that we could fight around. Can I have the next slide? The materials we find were these trees. And um, they were curved, and the local forestry department um, didn't see any use in them. And actually, they wanted to burn them. Um, but we saw a big chance. We saw a chance to make a beautiful arched roof. And so we did. And with a lot of shaving, we managed to make an organic roof um, that followed 
the, sh the, curved of the curves of the tree. And then for our insulation material, we grew hemp on the side. And this building material is known in the Netherlands for different uh, uses. Um, but this is industrial hemp, and it's a really good in insulator. Um, and it had been grown on site, uh, processed in the north of the Netherlands, and got back, um, and we used it to fill our walls and insulate the building. And for the interior, um, we used our most adorable building product, wool. And we used wool um, from Almere, um, because these sheep keep our lawns short. And the wool produces very nice filth. Um, so with a lot of volunteers, we made a huge mat measuring 10 by 5 meters um, that will decorate our walls. Uh, and it looks great. Um, so over the last couple of months, we've been building this uh, building from the ground up, I would say, but actually from the water up. Um, we put in the walls and um, we hope to finish in January. Can I have the next slide? Thank you. We hope to finish this building in January. And although this is a small example, I think um, it shows that we can do, we can build our shells with local material in a way that enhances our environment. And I think that's very important because as we've seen in Paris last week, our politicians are probably not going to do it. And I think we all have to search for things we can do ourselves in our environment and all be a bit like designers. And me as an architect, I want to help people do that. I want to help people like Ola did with Lego. I want to help them um, find a way of building that strengthens your imagination and creativity. I want to help people be their own designers because I think in the future, the way you li live is not constrained by technology, but it will be constrained by your imagination. And I think if we can do that, we can all live a bit more free in an, and independently. And we can live in a way that we're connected to our environment, but also to the rest of the world. And I think in the future, we can build our dreams ourselves and have a lot of fun while doing it. Thank you very much.